Hi and welcome to the New Leaf Podcast. This is my podcast about knitting and crocheting and basically my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl and I also have a website newleafdesigns.nl and I will list all of the other things right here. Thank you so much for stopping by to check out this episode. First off, I want to remind you guys there is a crochet along going on, which is the Breeze Blocks Shawl Crochet Along. I will show my own Breeze Blocks work in progress later on in this episode. And as always, timestamps can be found below in the description box. Um, So the crochet along is running until September 1st. So if you have any finished objects, be sure to um, enter them into the Ravelry thread. Um, before September 1st or on September 1st. I probably will uh, close it a few days later. Uh, And you uh, can win a Scapey Swirl Um, with your entry. uh, Scapey Swirl is the yarn that I am using for my breeze blocks and also for the original breeze blocks. And it's just an amazing yarn. And Scapey's was kind enough to offer a whirl of your choice uh, to the winner. Uh, So I'm really excited for that. I also have some uh, new crochet along ideas already, which I will share at the end of the episode. Also, I uh, am blown away by the response to my Patreon page. I, um, in the last episode, two weeks ago, I mentioned that I had launched my Patreon page and the response was amazing. So Patreon is a website where you can support your favorite creators on the internet. That is, if they have created a Patreon page for themselves. Um, so most of them use it as a kind of tip jar, um, but there's also a lot of creators who um, put amazing rewards out there for their patrons. And I'm also using the reward system concept. So uh, I have turned my Patreon page into a subscription page for uh, exclusive tutorial videos. So right now I'm recording a full series on fix your knits, on how to fix mistakes in knitting. Uh, I just uh, recorded a tutorial today on how to unknit. So it seems weird, right, that I would do a, uh, well, exclusive tutorial videos on knitting and crochet, but uh, that my first tutorial video would be on how to unknit. Seems really weird, but actually um, when I learned how to read my stitches and how to undo them, for me was the first step to becoming a confident knitter. And, you know, being able to fix your own mistakes makes you less afraid of making mistakes and thus makes you more confident in knitting and will improve your knitting. Um, There are a lot of tutorial videos out there on how to knit, how to cast on, how to do a knit stitch, how to do a purl stitch and I just, for my patrons, Um, I think most of them already know that, but if they don't, of course, they can request those videos and I will be happy to do them. Uh, But what I would like to offer my patrons is how how to lift their knitting, how to elevate their knitting to a new level. And, you know, how to really improve your knitting. So, yeah, I've created this membership platform where you can pay a fee once a month. And each, there uh, there are four membership tiers and each tier comes with their own benefits. And most of them also have discount codes for my paid patterns on Ravelry. And yeah, it's just, you know, I have a lot of rewards to offer and um, I will just link the Patreon page below so you can take a look if you want. Um, But yeah, as I said, I've been blown away by the response There are these goals you can set on Patreon. Um, For example, if you reach this many patrons a month or if you reach uh, this amount uh, of pledged um, fees per month. And we've already reached our first goal, which is amazing. And at this point, I can already um, 
you know, use the Patreon fees to help maintain my podcast equipment, uh, you know, get some new editing software, uh, also to help pay my website hosting fees. So it's, you know, uh, tiny steps, but I'm so, so excited that we're able, you know, that we were able to get to this goal so quickly and yeah, just thank you all so much. I'm also recording a extra video every Thursday, uh, kind of a behind the scenes uh, stuff, behind, um, you know, the designing process. Uh, I'll be discussing what I'll be doing that day and I'll be answering Patreon's questions. So I already um, recorded that this morning and I'm editing it right now. Well, not right now, in a bit. Um, yes, but, uh, right, let's get to some knitting content. Let's get on with the podcast. Uh, I have a finished object to show, to show you. And now I'm really doubting if I had finished these last time, but I really don't think so. But it's like so much has happened in the last two weeks that I'm forgetting what I knit. But, um, yes, I finished the lavender socks for my mom. Uh, which were toe up vanilla socks with an afterthought heel and a one by run one by one twisted no not twisted a one by one cuff and I really like them so now I only have to wash and block them and then I can gift them to her uh, the yarn is uh, Trops Fabo which was really nice to knit with, but I wouldn't buy again because tops. Um, it's just that I had this in my stash and I want to knit with stash, but um, yeah, I really don't want to support drops anymore because they steal so many patterns and yeah, it's just not nice. So not uh, knitting with the that label anymore but the socks turned out really nicely and I used some West Yorkshire spinners in the Penny Royal colorway which is this light purple as a contrast color or complementing color yeah I'm really pleased I think I even wove in all the ends yes I did so only wash and block and then I can get them. I've also been crocheting a lot on my breeze blocks and I made so many so much progress that my whirl kind of collapsed onto itself and I had to wind it into a cute little ball. Um, you know, because the whirl is kind of this yarn cake which is very stable when it's you know not broken into but once you uh, start to work with it it gets you know it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and then it's just this little tube and then it will kind of fall apart uh, so I rewound it into this ball and so I did quite a lot I think I'm so pleased uh, so here's Mr. Llama or Alpaca, there he is. So I did, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. And I am so excited for the end product because, uh, you know, the breeze blocks is a shawl that looks great when you're working on wearing it. Oh my god, so many R's when you're working on it. But when you block it, it's magic. It's it just improves so so much. Um, the lace, you know, it really really opens up and. It's just amazing. So I'm really, really excited for that. Um, I might even be able to finish it in um, the next two weeks, but I have some more pressing uh, projects 
to finish first. So I'm not sure if I will be able to finish this. But really, really pleased with this. I love that the yellow is finally coming through because I was working with the blue like a lot <laughs> and blue is my favorite color so you know that's really nice uh, but it's really nice to have the yellow in there as well now and I've been seeing more and more projects with this exact same world and still all of them look so so different so yeah world is just magic it's really magic And I was so excited to see some people finishing their Bruce blogs this week or uh, this past two weeks. I've seen a beautiful one with a whirl called Melting Macaroon. It's this uh, pastel rainbow kind of whirl. And it was so, so beautiful. And um, uh, the person who made it, uh, Sana, hi Sana, uh, she uh, made it into a cowl. So. I believe she used less stitches, but, but not a whole lot less. And um, and then just made the ends together. So you have a cowl. So that was really a good idea actually, because um, I've always used it as a big shawl, a big wrap. But you could totally make a cowl out of it. It's really, really clever. It's getting really dark outside and it's the middle middle of the day but um, today is one of the first days it has rained in like two months um, and it's really dark and cloudy outside I'm not complaining because it is really getting pleasantly cool but it does make for really stark shadows all over the screen so Onto some knitting whips because believe it or not, I have started two sweaters since the last podcast. What? Um, I have still one sweater on the needles, but that didn't seem to stop me. So um, I have cast on, and my patrons will have already seen this. I've cast on for a bottom up knit in pieces sweater. I'm in the middle of a row, so. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. I can't really show you properly. So here's what I have knit so far. It's deliciously pink. It's, oh, it's so beautiful. Um, I'm knitting this out of the yarn I showed you last time, which is Scapius Merino Soft Brush. in the Van Dyck colorway, which is color 256, and in Scapius Mohair in the Jitterbug colorway. It's so pretty. And these two together make for this lovely uh, fabric. I love Merino and Mohair together. And yeah, I am doing a bottom-up sweater and I'm writing up my notes as I go because I hope to uh, create a pattern out of this. So I did one by one rib. I did a um, cabled cast on, an um, alternate cable cast on, and then just stuck in it. Um, yeah, and I'll have to separate, well not separate, um, maybe not even at all. Um, I have to see if I want to make this a boxy fit or if I want to just cast off a few stitches on the sides um, for the sleeves. I think so, but yeah. Oh, it's so pretty. So let me share a little bit uh, of the inspiration behind this sweater. So um, some of you may know 
Well, I hope most of you know the song Pink by Janelle Monet, and it's pink written with a Y. And it's a beautiful music video and a beautiful song. Um, and in the music video, everything's pink. And of course, I love that. But uh, what's more important is the message behind the song. So um, one of the um, one of the lines is, "Inside we're all just pink," and it means like it doesn't matter who you are. Inside we're all the same. And the song is about inclusivity um, of women. Uh, that doesn't matter what kind of woman you are, if you're born as a woman, if you're not born as a woman, um, if it, it just matters if you identify as a woman, then you are a woman. And um, I think it's a really powerful message. And I don't know, I think, I think it should be heard more often. So, um, yeah, but of course you, you have kind of diversity in women as to um, if someone is born as a woman or, you know, born as a man, has had a sex change or not. Um, and on the other side, there is diversity between uh, women of color. Um, and of course I am not a woman of color, so I... I, it doesn't feel very appropriate for me to be speaking like on behalf of women of color. It, you know, I, I, can, I can't even begin to imagine um, what kind of struggles they may have, what I have never had. Um, but um, yes, I do feel really strongly about this. Um, Especially because, uh, you know, at my company, it's an import company of Asian foods and we also have a lot of uh, Asian uh, colleagues. Um, and, you know, uh, we have Vietnamese colleagues, um, Chinese, Cantonese, um, Thai colleagues, uh, many more. <laughs> and to hear them talking about that they feel really um, like that they they feel at home at our company whereas they did not feel like they were even accepted at their previous job I was shocked I was I was really shocked um, to hear that my colleagues, who who I just respect as my colleagues, and I, I wouldn't have anyone else in their place, that they were not accepted at their previous work, it was just um, it was a real shock. So um, yes, I don't want to get really into this, uh, but. When I heard this song, I was really inspired and uh, I thought, okay, I'm gonna knit this sweater and for the pattern, I'm going to ask as many women of color in my neighborhood, in my vicinity, to wear this sweater so I can take their picture and it will be the cover for this pattern. At least that's what I envision. Um, I've asked my colleagues uh, a lot of times uh, before um, to be the model for my uh, patterns and I think if something really simple as that, like creating more visibility of women of color, um, for them to be more accepted than they are now, <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's it's really weird that they are not accepted, but, you know, of course it does happen. And, um, yes, it's just, I don't know, I had this idea and I thought it was 
really nice, but on the other hand, I'm uh, not really sure if it is appreciated if I do that. So yeah, it's just it's just a feel good sweater to me, and I hope it will be a feel good sweater for a lot of people. And I seem to have a real theme this week because all of my projects seem to be some shade of purple. Um, we had this purpley pink shade for the pink sweater, my purple lavender socks, the breeze blocks, which also has some purple in there, and now, now comes the project. Oh, I, I love this project, and spoiler alert, it's also purple. Um, I don't know if you know uh, Olga, who is Handmade Closet on Instagram, but she makes the most amazing sweaters and, and also shawls. Um, and she has recently started designing her own sweaters and shawls. Um, this is actually her first sweater design and she was looking for testers and the color she used was so similar to some yarn I had in my stash. Um, so I immediately, immediately thought, oh, I might be able to knit a sweater out of stash. And so I messaged her uh, if, you know, my size was still available for testing. Oh, kitty! No, 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 don't cancel. Kitty was walking on my laptop. Kitty? Mama? <laughs> she talks all of the time. She's like, Mama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a kitty bird. Huh? You gonna be nice? Should I put you back? Okay. No. No, no, please. <laughs> okay. She really likes sitting on laptops. And she's figured out how to, you know, turn them off. So that's really fun. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I messaged uh, Olga if uh, my size was still available for test knitting, and it was. Uh, so she sent me the pattern. She has yet to name uh, the sweater pattern. Uh, it's called, uh, well, the, the test pattern is called Woolberry Sweater because it's made with uh, Woolberry Fiber Company yarn. Uh, but if you want to um, enter in a giveaway, for the pattern and yarn kit, you can go to Olga's Instagram, which is at Handmade Closet, and you can um, give your suggestion for how to name this sweater, which I'm going to show you, or at least most of the yoke, because I've been really speed knitting on this. I mean, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, just look at it. I love it so much. Oh, I really, really love it. I love the scalloped edge right here. And the yoke is just, it's just amazing. And yeah, I love how the colors go together. Um, as I said, I already had this yarn in my stash. Uh, I'm using a possum based yarn, which was sent to me by one of my lovely viewers, Louise. Thank you so, so much. Um, I love working with it and um, uh, it's from New Zealand where possums are really kind of a plague. Uh, so, um, and their yarn, uh, their, um, how do you call this? Their fur is used um, in this yarn, um, but most of it is merino because a possum, I think, has kind of the same um, aspects 
as alpaca fiber, uh, mainly that it is super soft and very warm, but also very drapey. So if you don't combine it with something else, it will just, you know, it, it doesn't have any elasticity. So this is, um, um, is blended with uh, merino, and I think it's Australian merino, but I may be wrong. Okay, so it's 75% pure New Zealand merino and 25% possum. And this is the label. It's a brand called New Zealand Made. And, or, I don't know if that's the brand, the kind of a logo there. And maybe the brand is Naturally instead. Naturally. And the yarn is called Amuri. Uh, I only have 50 grams, but it was 240 meters, so I think that would be enough because Olga said that color A would be 220 meters for my size, so ooh, kind of pushing it. But um, there's some more color detail on the uh, wrists, so at least I will be able to complete the yoke. Yes, yeah, so I'm using that as my first color. Um, I'm using this lovely yarn as the second color, and I have no idea what it is, but um, it's really nice and soft, and I love the colors. And this one, a third color, um, is another yarn that was gifted to me via uh, Fibershare, um, which I entered, I think, two years ago. And it's, oh, it's a beautiful light, um, light purple with blue and also pink. It's just really, really pretty. And I have it right here in the skein. I have, um, uh, I have three skeins in total. Uh, Candid Yarns from Canada, Woodbury. And it's 100% virgin wool. Uh, and it also says that it's moth proofed. So, yeah, I'm excited. Um, both. This one and the color A are kind of single ply yarn, even though this one says four ply on the tag. I think it might be the English tradition of just calling the weight a four ply because um, in the uh, United Kingdom they tend to uh, not use the term fingering weight but use the term four ply. And while this is this is a single ply yarn, but um, it's fingering weight. This one is also fingering weight, although this is a very sticky yarn. So, um, so you could use it for on a larger needle. Uh, I have the feeling that this will be very warm. That if you, you uh, if you knit it on a, a larger needle, that it will still like kind of fill up the gaps in between the stitches and still hold a lot of warmth. Um, and this is also a single ply. And you can see the yarn is kind of it's kind of sticky. It uh, the fibers tend to stick together. And um, yeah, so. Uh, I'm u I'm using all three colors on the same row at the moment, so I'm just transitioning from from the yoke to the uh, main body of the sweater. And I'm gonna show you the inside because I'm really proud of it. Uh, I've really caught my floats really well, uh, but also. Um, the color work chart is just, it's just designed so well. Um, let me point out something. So there are little dots of color A, like in, in between color B here, so that the floats will not be that long. 
Um, but still, in some places, like here, you knit this whole thing with just color B. So I've uh, I've caught the floats in between. I think I I catch them every third stitch. Um, but I wasn't able to do that on this last row. So here, I have really long floats of the third color. But as it is a really sticky yarn, I don't think it will be a problem. And maybe I can knit them into the next round, although I'm not sure if that would be a smart idea. So, yeah. And I have attached my uh, Progress Keeper by Shiny Stuff Creations. The little pizza slice. I love it. And my uh, stitch marker for the beginning of the round is this little, little crabby that I got. It was an earring originally. I got it at a Taiwanese aquarium and I just made it into a stitch marker. Yeah. So I have cast this on exactly a week ago. No, wait. Even, uh, it's Thursday now and I cast it on last Friday. I did swatch last Thursday. Yeah. So less than a week and already I have this. And I'm so tempted to put it on <laughs> every time I complete a row. But, um, yeah, the needles are too short now so I can't. I can't unfold it all the way now. But it's so pretty! I love it! I'm just slightly concerned that the yoke, like on top here, it might be too bulgy. Um, just because I couldn't get gauge um, and because it was a really time sensitive project, I decided to just go ahead because usually the gauge from my swatch and the gauge on my project is not the same anyway, as I learned with the Tegna. Tegna. Um, yes. So I might have to re-knit this top part with a smaller needle, um, just so it won't bulge so much. Um, that also has to do with the um, uh, with the possum content. Yes, but I'll, I'll see how it uh, blocks. And as you can see, the neckline is just um, a rolled a rolled neckline. Just a rolled stockinette neckline, so that's really nice. Um, yeah, I'm so, so pleased with this. And it's my first yoked sweater. And it's my first colorwork sweater. So a lot of firsts, um, and I'm just really excited. Alright, so at the beginning of this video I mentioned that I had a idea, an idea, for a new cow, a new crochet along. And that idea was uh, given to me by one of my viewers, Lois. Hi Lois! Um, and she asked if I would be hosting a Chevrainbow blanket crochet along um, in the near future. And I thought that was an amazing idea because I am so excited about that pattern. Um, I'll put in a picture right here. And a lot of people um, are excited about it and are uh, making their own versions. Um, and it just seems like a lot of fun to host a crochet along for that. I would really have to think about how long to make that crochet along though because it's a blanket. Um, so it takes a while. It took me two months to make it and it took my mom even less than that, like one month and a week. Uh, so it is a really, really quick blanket. And I am thinking to make another one with the other uh, stone washed and river washed cutie pie pack that I have here. Um, and this is the XL variety. So 
it's not a fingering weight or, or maybe it was more like a DK um, the yarn I used before which it was the stonewashed regular and this is stonewashed XL and that's more like a worsted or Aran weight uh, cotton acrylic blind and I have picked out the colors that I will be using with this uh, color pack um, so the idea of the blanket is that is that you have this color pack and then you have 10 um, regular sized uh, balls and that you alternate them and then you have a double gradient it's amazing and uh, my mom has also made uh, her blanket which is a cutie pie pack by Scapius but uh, then with just one solid color as the background uh, it's amazing so I really really like that as well but I wanted to do another one with a, a gradient background um, so yes I will be making the XL version um, and I think I will figure out the stitch count before the start of the crochet along so you can decide for yourself if you want to make the regular version or the XL version I have no idea if the XL version is also going to be bigger because these balls have less yardage, I think. But I'll, I'll just uh, figure that out. Yeah, so let me know if you're interested in the Shift Rainbow Blanket crochet along and then I, think I can see when I can host it. Um, Alright, that is all from me for today. I have a video to edit and another pattern to translate so I'm gonna get cracking before the day is done and um, I wish you a very crafty couple of weeks and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye!